There's only one London in the world, except for all the other ones. Uh, which is really annoying, and couldn't there just be one? Thank you very much. But we were called Londinium by the Romans, and we said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to change some of the vowels at the end, and then just because we want the undung sound. And I think that's what we're most attached to. When I think of London, I think of the undung, the same O-N-O-N bit at the end. That, uh, and we have no songs. There's no songs. Well, there's one song for London, but we should have a, a song that, because there's American songs like New York and, hey, and Chicago and Chicago and San Francisco, where's the sea, you know. But we should have one that reflects, I think, London vibrancy and London fuck offness. And <laughs> London, London, why don't you all fuck off? <laughs> but come and spend your money, come around and spend your money, have a good time, then fuck off, then come back on Tuesday in half past three, because we need some cash just then, then fuck off, come back, fuck off, come back, fuck off, come back. <laughs> I think that's. That is the CD that's on sale in the, my trousers. <laughs> it's a standard beginning of any show, that. All, all the way up Shaftesbury Avenue, except for every other theatre. So, ding, 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 Tonight, tonight, I thought I'd talk about everything that's ever happened in the world. Um, and the critics, I said this, critics said, no, you're not. And I said, of course I'm not. And then he said, all right. And I said, well, what the fuck do you say? And they went, because oh, we're critics. And then we all met in a dark alleyway and we slapped each other. Um, but uh, no, because you people, you people here tonight, you are the thinking people. You have to be. If you're going into theatres, if you're going into these kind of things, Bill Me, Bill Bailey, well, most of the theatres, the musicals are slightly different. It's not that they're not thinking, but they're more, yaka da, there's chickens on the sea. Throw them a rope, bring them a banjo. They'll live forever as chickens with banjos and ropes. You know, and people go, yeah, I, mean, I love that one, whatever they're talking about. And they all get married and have sex in trees. And they're, they're got, there's more of a, uh, a, a visceral ride, an emotional ride, something. But this, this, you have to be thinkers. You have to be thinkers out of the box, or at least lid thinkers to come here. I think you have to be lid thinkers. You could have been dragged, and you might be an in-the-box thinker going, oh, my God, what's he talking about? <laughs> what's all this? But yes, out-of-the-box thinkers who make up stuff like, look, we could put spoons, and they could run space. <laughs> and people say, what is that sentence you've said there? OK, the sentence didn't make sense. We could put spoons, we could have spoons, and they could run, I don't know, I'm out of the box. And then there's lid thinkers saying, well, we can see Jeff, he's out of the box, and it's an interesting idea. <laughs> Maybe we'll join him. Maybe we'll stay here. And then there's in the box thinkers going, I've got a ladder. <laughs> could I see the out of the box thinkers? Anyway. So tonight, tonight, we'll talk with the use of Wikipedia, which has taught me so many things that I didn't know, and neither did you. <laughs> Wikipedia has pages on it. Everything. There's I, almost nothing. There was one thing I looked up and I couldn't find. And I can't remember what it is, so it probably doesn't matter. <laughs> Everything is in Wikipedia. Run by Mr. and Mrs. Wikipedia, <laughs> who live in a toilet somewhere. They have no money, you know. I have, this is an image I have with, they, they do everything with torches, old fashioned <laughs> torches, which are only used in treasure films now. <laughs> Treasures down here, so <laughs> you need one of these. Oh yeah, but there's always about 12 of them. One for you, for the kids, for your boy. Who's that? This badger, do you want one? That's a zoo mice lolly. The zoo mice lolly, the closest we in the United Kingdom have got to the moon. I remember licking the zoo mice lollies, all three colors, thinking we're almost there boys, we're almost at the moon. But no, we were almost at the ice lolly stage of the moon landing, and we finished the ice. And they're still there. Are they still on sale? Can you still get the zoom? Ah, you see, we're still, they're still wishful thinkman. Wishful thinkman? Wishful thinkman. <laughs> wish fulfillment? Wishful thinking. Wishful thinking and wish fulfillment is wishful thinkman. <laughs> if combined. It was good, wasn't it? Ah, uh, 70s. Anyway. From a nice lolly perspective. <laughs> Yes, yes. So the Wikipedia people, and, and it's stuff on everything. And, and, you, and, and you used to have arguments. How do, you make, how do you make spoons, Jim? 
Jack, Kenny, Rogers, two people. How'd you make them? And if, if no one knew, you'd go, ah, fuck it. And you wouldn't go, I'll join a library. I'll join a library and I'll, and I'll get a, a library card after six months and then I'll look up spoons. No, you wouldn't. No, you'd just, you'd just give up then. But now we've got Wikipedia, we look up spoons, and you probably get bored within three lines. Have you noticed you go, spoons are made from just spoons? <laughs> within three lines, you're going, helicopters, helicopters, well, they took over the world. Chickens, chickens drive helicopters. <laughs> Alligators, you know, and, and you could just keep going until you get to one you click on, and, and it says, there is no page for this person. And you think, why did you put them in blue? <laughs> Don't put them in blue and have no page. Just don't put them in blue. We have been trained. Like Pavlov and his dogs. Pavlov would train his dogs. Yes. Still applause for Mr. Pavlov. What a scientist. What a scientist. What a guy. Ding, ding, ding. Make a Pavlova with only paws. That's a bit crap. We've got no thumbs. Cake mix, when I was a kid, was a brilliant thing. You'd make a cake for your mum, and you the cake with a big wooden spoon, la, 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 and then you'd put that thing all in the bowl, and then they said you could lick the spoon, and you went, ah, oh my God. <laughs> this was fantastic. Ah, oh. oh, wow. What are we doing with that? This is just, this is good, this is ready. And then they'd take that, they'd put it in an oven, and it would come out less good. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? It's not just me. It was genius before it went in and it came out, eh, you know, fine. But you have to put more stuff on it to make it back to this stuff. Just don't put it in. And then when I was a student, I was sitting there, well, I was before, that was after I was a student. I was unemployed for a entire year and I lived in Islington and I watched telly for a year, literally, really, seriously. And I got encyclopedic on the uh, Australian daytime soap operas. And I was watching The Sullivans, which would come on in about a family. We're going to go to war soon. And uh, that's all I remember. And uh, they got on well, lots of fighting. And, uh, and I made a, I thought, I'll make some of this because it's just seemed really cheap. So I, I was estimating margarine, sugar, blah, blah. And then I just made the whole bowl and sat there watching The Sullivans eating. <laughs> and I died. I actually... <laughs> they had to pump me, you know. Um, and cake was coming out of my ears. It was because it makes a cake. Once it's in there, the juices make a cake. And you're going, can you, can you get a, this cake coming out of my ear? So that's how I remember it. I phoned the police using the old phone. Shh, shh, shh. Which used to take for hours. Why did they put 999 right at the end of the dial? Our emergency services, 999. He's dying. I'm phone. Shh. His legs come off. I'm doing it. I can't remember how many I've done now. <laughs> Why not one, one, one? What bright spark didn't go to one, one, one? Come, come now. Okay, cool. Save. <laughs> so, Wikipedia. Yes. On the very sexy computers, like the Macintosh computer, I have an Apple Macintosh computer, very sort of touchy, sexy, feely, and you open it up, and in the old days, porn would take forever to download. Do you remember that? <laughs> I, friends tell me. Um, <laughs> friends who can spell porn. It, well, it was that, that picture that would come, you go, what is it? This is cat porn. This is a picture of a cat, which is a picture of a cat. <laughs> But nowadays, you're just tip-tapping away and a little box comes up. Would you like a software update? And you go, yeah, yeah, one of those. It's like a latte thing. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and then time becomes a different thing. Time becomes weird as it downloads. Five minutes to download, four minutes to download, three minutes to download, nine minutes to download, <laughs> two minutes to download, seven hours to download, six seconds to download, a light year to download. And then it starts asking you questions. Like, uh, you sign a new agreement with iTunes. And I've signed many agreements with iTunes. I don't know what they want from me anymore. Surely they know I agree with them. I'm just, I'm there, you know? Why do they keep checking, like I'm gonna go away? No, I no longer agree with you. We all agree. And they've made us liars. You can't say to children, don't lie. Well, you said you've read the terms and conditions. You just... No one! 
has read the terms and conditions. No one in the world. No one, even the lawyers who wrote it, wrote it like this. It could say anything in there. We will take your buttocks and sell them to Chinese. Yes. Set fire to your hedges. Why not? Put your knee in a sling. Yeah, give me that. Fuck. Because you're in go fever at that point. Come on. Give me the update. Because it could be that one update. That one update will make your life complete. You know, like the Willy Wonka golden chocolate thingy with the ray. Well, you, you, you update, yes, and, and then sex with everyone and, and free chickens for life. Whether they want to come or not. But then it downloads and you have to do a reboot thing, which is basically getting ready to go to the seaside with your bucket and spade, the engine on, and your dad says, come on, everyone out of the car. What? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Everyone back in the car. Back in the car. We're just, we're just going. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> so, yes, and then you update the whole thing and nothing's changed, which is a bit weird and annoying. If you have a PC computer, um, I think it's a similar thing. You press the on button and then there's a crank. You have to crank it. <laughs> and then they get contact and they spin the propeller and you get in. <laughs> Come on, the PC's going now. <laughs> and you put on a 78 record. <laughs> Move the horn around. <laughs> Caruso sings the update. <laughs> I've worked out that opera is just being, if you, if you, you either learn opera or you can just get a microphone and go, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's, it's rich people watching large people being shaken by small people. Wow! And also, the word should not be clear. If it's, I'm going to go to the toilet, that's not opera. Opera is, I'm going to find a give him his marching papers, send him to the chemist for tea tree oil. If you got that. And the women sing crazy, they're so high. It's like cats outside your window. I'm not a cat. Fucking hell. Oh, I got to the tree aisle. I'm the cat. It's bloody tiring this way. But there are some songs which are faster. Yibbity dibbity 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 did he eat something? Was he got a bad leg? I know his first name. Continue. <laughs> Figaro, 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 Stevens. <laughs> went, went to the pub, went to the pub, went to the pub. Figaro Stevens went to the pub, went to the pub, went to the pub, and read a French newspaper. <laughs> oh, yes. So, I've learned that the world is 4,500 million years old. If you're very religious, then uh, it's not 4,500 million years old, it's 6,000 years old. One of these is not correct, <laughs> using simple logic here. Now, the science boys, they've got anoraks, they've got glasses, they've got Bunsen burners and Petri dishes. I've got to go with them, because they can bend glass, and if they heat it up, you know, and sodium chloride and potassium permanganate, make potassium permanganate. <laughs> what was the one that was, uh, pff, and that, that was that one, and, and all that stuff that we did. And then if you're religious, the religious boys, they've got a book, And some, some, some really interesting stuff in the book, good stories in the book. I mean, I mean, I think a lot of the people in there are true. I think it's oral histories. I think stuff in there is true. And there's slavery in there. Hmm. Maybe crime against humanity there in a good moral book. Uh, maybe shouldn't be in. Maybe the editor should have put a line through how to sell your daughter. Hmm. I don't don't you think one of the popes would have thought, ah, we could, can we, you know, we're dumping a lot of these books. Can we just cross out the uh, slavery bit and pretend it never happened? They left it in till now. It's still there. <laughs> it makes me think there isn't a God, you know? Because I, I used to be an agnostic and now I'm an atheist. 
Uh, I'm all for spirituality, and I think there's a lot of religious people who've got, you know, certain something. And I believe in us. I don't believe in God. I believe in us. We're us human beings. But if God was there, thank you, one person. <laughs> if God was there, I think the first line of the Bible should be, it's round. <laughs> Looks flat, but it's round. Yeah, it spins. It's like a big football. It's, oh, it's very complicated. Imagine you're an ant on a football and you're spinning, but you can't feel it. <laughs> Sorry about the slavery. Um, couldn't get the staff. They seem to like it. <laughs> Shit. All right. Forget this bit. Right. Oh, in the beginning was the word. Don't you think? If there was a God, don't you think he would have flicked Hitler's head off? Don't you think? You know, oh, I'm not allowed to do anything. Well, fuck off then. If you're not allowed to do anything, then what's the use? Just piss off and stop asking us to mumble things on Sundays. Please, could you possibly mumble positive things towards me on a Sunday? In the coldest buildings you can find. Please get some of your senior citizens to wear cakes on their heads and to mumble the ridiculously positive things about me. No, he should have just flicked Hitler's head off. Hitler would have been going, I will kill them, I will take them, I will tear them apart, I will bomb them, I will kill them. That's a hint, you know, for a bit of intervention, isn't it? And then he'd just come around <laughs> and the Nazis would be going, hey! Oh, ho, ho, ho! What other leader can do that? <laughs> Shit, that's not supposed to happen, is it? Okay, let's just go. <laughs> let's just go. And somebody, it might have happened while someone, some other Nazi was in the toilet coming out. Oh, what happened? What happened? What was it? I heard, I heard a big shout. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> How did he do that? <laughs> well, he really is the leader. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> do you want to come back to my place? We'll have a coffee. Could have been the end, but no, we didn't do it. So, yes, 4,500 million years ago, I do believe our Earth started with a place your bets type of spinning thing. And then we turn up human beings five million years ago. Why the big pause? As the man in the pub said to the bear. <laughs> or why the long pause? As the man in the pub said to the bear. The bear said, I got him stuck in a lift door. I'm not telling jokes, I'm just fucking around with the idea. <laughs> it's the pause I'm interested in. Because it is a big one. Have you noticed? 4,500 million years minus 5 million years is 4,495 million years of nothing. Well, there was stuff, there was bleh, and bleh. I thought dinosaurs ruled the world all that period, but no, they were around for 200 million years. So we've been five, they've been 200. And they weren't even ruling. Because if they were ruling on the, on the Steven Spielberg movies, we'd see that the dinosaurs were going... You smell of sandwiches. You can come because I got a rubby bumpy. And let's eat him. <laughs> That would be dinosaurs ruling the earth, but I've noticed from the films that they seem to just get up in the morning and go, ah, with a look of not bright as a button, you know, not a few sandwiches short of a picnic. And they just go around eating and pooing each other all day for 200 million years. Come on, that's not a God making that. They, they, if God did that, his children would be crazy. And I think he, if he did exist, he had many children. I think Jesus proves this. Jesus must be the seventh son of God. Asus, Beezus, Caesus, Deezus, Ezus, Ephesus, Jesus. That's just logic. That's just mathematical. And teasers would always be fucking about. And pizzas does deliveries. And Caesar started the Roman Empire. Caesar's. Ephesus, city in Turkey. And Beezus was covered in something. Some people applauding there, other people going, what? <laughs> bees was covered in bees. 
but yeah, dinosaurs, dinosaurs just wandering around. No dinosaur poetry. Not clever. They weren't going, I was a lonely as a cloud. Oh, and I saw a small and I him. And then I ate that guy and then I pulled him out. And I was like, what a day. <laughs> they didn't go to church. No dinosaur churches. Very few dinosaur vicars going, well, <laughs> Welcome to today's service. We will now sing him 409, All Things Bright and Beautiful. <laughs> They don't live on the planet at the moment. <laughs> that scene did not happen. Yeah, so... Not clever. The, the, I think most of the dinosaurs were not clever, from what I can tell. Uh, the raptors do seem quite clever. Smaller, by our size. They seem to be able to break into rooms, work locks, do computer stuff. <laughs> download raptor porn. and then run away and not pay. <laughs> they can almost pass for us. You put a little pork pie hat on a raptor, and it almost looks like a human being. Is this your car, sir? <laughs> Do you realize how fast you were going? I... <laughs> you were going a million miles an hour. Oh, really? <laughs> is that over the, over the thing? Yes, the, the limit is 30 miles an hour. Oh, that's... I was very busy. <laughs> well, can you show me your documents? I, I, I was with a, I was with a I, I can't do it. Ah, it's a raptor. Get me a dustbin lid. <laughs> it's a fucking raptor. Run, run. No, stay, chase him. Something. <laughs> the raptors. And then we turn up, the human beings of this world, we turn up five million years ago. And that, I think, is the point where we started to walk erect. And I think it must have been a gradual period. I don't think we could have just gone, <laughs> oh, this is better. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't do this a long time ago. Steve, Jeffrey, come on, try this. I can see clearly now. The rain has gone. I can see all lobsters in my way. <laughs> it really gets interesting around tool time. Tool time is the uh, Stone Age. That's when it kicks off, Stone Age. Before the Stone Age, no stones, no tools. Hunting was bizarre. Come on, there's a bison. Come on, lads. <laughs> Will you die, sir? Die, I tell you, you're on our territory. I peed and pooed all around here. <laughs> I marked my territory quite clearly. <laughs> Will, ah. Will you die, sir? Could you possibly? I, you could feed a family for nine years. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you look at me with those big eyes, those big cow eyes. <laughs> this could take hours. <laughs> Buggering hell. Come on, where are you? How can you be late? It's the Stone Age. There's nothing to be late in the Stone Age from. Bastards. <laughs> oh, that is much better. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see that? The others come running up. So I picked up a stone, I hit the bison. He's just, he's gone, he's dead. This is brilliant, Jeff. <laughs> this could be the beginning of an age. Well, that's what I was thinking. I, uh, provisionally, I have entitled it the, the age of big things falling over because they're hit by small things of a much denser material. <laughs> no, just, just Stone Age. Stone Age, yes! <laughs> You're always better than me than that, weren't you? <laughs> weren't you Siegfried? <laughs> We're not sure of the names. So the Stone Age began. They were hitting tools. They were cutting tools. You could cut the skin off an animal that no longer needed it. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, no problem. It's very good. <laughs> 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 
Thank you so much. Oh, hang on. Stuff. <laughs> I'm king. I'm king here now. I'm king. I'm king of this area. I wear the cloak. The cloak of. The cloak. You shut up! I think you're supposed to hang it out until it dries. Otherwise, flies. Shut up, Twiggy. I'm king of the flies. Oh, this is almost a book. <laughs> if your name wasn't Twiggy, but Leonard. No. <laughs> language was developed 100,000 years ago. Before that, no language. Before that, also no religion. You can't have religion by grunting it. Just, you can't get moral ideas out by going, ugh, wah, wah. I suppose so. Oh, I don't know what you are. <laughs> I don't know what you are. <laughs> Ten Commandments in, in grunts. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, you want to be Two. You want to be No. Three. You know, shut up. The rabbit. Uh, four. <laughs> in the bag. And you put it in. Poo. And you turn it in the toilet. Because it's not. It's very good. Five. You got a thing? I don't know what it is. Uh, my mother. Uh, okay, forget five. Six. <laughs> Never eat shit. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. We're pretty sure that was the first identifiable line of language. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> One thing was huge before language, and that was Scrabble. Because <laughs> Scrabble, after language, it became about words. Before language, it was just put the letters down. There were no rules. Everyone was a winner. K, t, fung, guitar, bl, skling, dung. 76. <laughs> a sting box ex It's 105. It's a triple word. Dang. Scrabble was invented by Nazis to piss off kids with dyslexia. <laughs> this is true, they proved this now. The word dyslexia was invented by Nazis to piss off kids with dyslexia. What's the point of coming up with a word like dyslexia to explain a word blindness spelling problem? <laughs> they have a problem with the words. It is a difficult thing. We've called this problem God 22, pick up. It has 17 silent letters in the face of a rat in it. <laughs> Just call it bonk. They suffer from bonk. They have a word blindness. We call it bonk. Excuse me, miss, I got bonk. All right, all right, just choose something at the corner of the class. All right. <laughs> I would have preferred that than sitting there and spelling color with a K. I did a fantastic I spy. It's brilliant for I spy. I, I spy with a, with a S for ceiling. Went on for hours. <laughs> so my brother was throttling me. S ceiling. Ceiling's not with an S. Of course it is. So we were hunter-gatherers, we were killers. We were killers only 2,000 years ago. Hunter-gatherers, hardwired into our brains. And I think our journey, I don't think there's any reason why we're here. You know, the meaning of life, I don't think there is one. I think we're just accidentally here. I think it's that random, kids, because that, that, that would explain there's so many millions out there. And people talk about the Earth being in the Goldilocks place where we're not too close to the sun, not too far away. I think it's just now. I think it's just, there's probably other people out there. But we, while we're here, we may as well do civilization. Just to be civil to one another. Because we got the killer thing in, and, you know, assassins, they took drugs. Maybe as a reward, or maybe to make them just jump over the idea of going out and killing people. And it was hashish. That's where the word comes from. They were hashashins. <laughs> now, it's true. Now, this sounds silly. They were hashashins. And read it, it's on Wikipedia. You can look it up on your iPhones while I'm talking to you. It's true, I've done it. It's there, and they were talking about, they would give them hashish and say, you are hashash now. <laughs> Help yourself to hashish. And then we'll go do hashash <laughs> He's He's off his rock, really. Because I do think that hashish is one of the worst, it's the wrong drug to give to people who are going to go out and do something. Unless you say, we're going to take over a Mars bar factory. <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah, come on. There is an empowerment there. We're all going to go and dive into bags of sugar. Yes, yes, of course. 
But apart from that, they'd organized assassinations. It's just crazy. You get that? What? What? Hold this, hold this. Get, get behind the hedge, get behind. Oh, God. Bing bong. <laughs> He's not, oh, is he? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry about this. We, we just, uh, we're Hishashans. No, we're Hishashans. Uh, we're gonna kill you. We're supposed to kill you. Do you have a Kit Kat? <laughs> if you've got a Kit Kat, that's like a get out of jail free card. <laughs> well, you, you have? He's got, he's got, have you got three? <laughs> oh, you got a four, but he's got a four bar one. Come on, all right, all right. All right, all right. Just, shh, shh, stum, stum, close the door, fuck off. <laughs> we should do this everywhere. <laughs> Kit, Kit Kat, sure, ding dong. You got Kit Kats. <laughs> Or just a cat kit, like a Meccano cat. Oh, forget it. <laughs> that the guy gets on the roof with the briefcase. I am in position. Shh. Sorry, I am in position on the roof with the briefcase. All right, all right. Yeah, I, I will. Say, I will assemble it. All right. Attach part A to part B, the part of C is a bomb for to apply transfers to model aircraft. These are wrong instructions. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, I haven't, uh, I haven't got a gun. I have got a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Well, it's in a similar briefcase. <laughs> it just looks si I know, I know, I, I know, I know what you said, I know. Don't bring the vacuum cleaner. But it's, in a, it's a Dyson Slimline. It's really lightweight. It's orange, the ball type. Goes around corners really well. All right, all right, I'll pack up here. Shall I hoover up before I go? <laughs> all right, all right, I know, I know. No, well, I, hey, I'll throw it at him. How's about I throw it at him? No, it's not very accurate, but it has a fantastic element of surprise. <laughs> and, and we now, I think, in modern days, maybe we have more of a sense, more of an empathy with people. We can see horrors going on. We saw the tsunami. Well, back we saw the thing in Mumbai. We've seen films. It, it, it's, maybe it's not visceral, but it, you, can, you, can, you, can, you get a very good visual sense of, of, of what has gone on and been on in the past. Uh, back in the Battle of Hastings time, you didn't have a clue what happened in the battle. You're either in that battle or you just fucking forget it. Or you watch a tapestry. <laughs> the Bayer Tapestry tells you in panels what's going on. But, you know, it's weavers. Weavers were the war, war correspondents. Weavers were the photojournalists of the day going, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, my God, look at that. Get that down, Kelly. Put that here. What are they doing? Oh, God. Keep moving, keep moving. Don't look at the weavers. Just move on. <laughs> Do some weird haircuts for the boys, all right? Give them a bit of a laugh, eh? <laughs> Willie, Big Willie, hey, do it, give him a wave. Hey, Big Willie, good luck. It's a Duke of Norway, it's the bastard. Hey. Come on, win, you bastards. We shoot someone in the eye, we've already done that panel. <laughs> I've sewn this to my leg, is that a problem? <laughs> the, um, the, uh, the paparazzi, they were paparazzi, very early paparazzi, going, all right, Anne Boleyn, Anne Boleyn, how's it going, love, hey? <laughs> Just hang on a sec, love, trying to get you down right. You don't look like a weir weirdo, do you? I'm going to do three noses if you're not careful. Just slow down, baby. Push your breasts up a bit. Is your sister with you? We'll do a double panel. All right. All right, good luck. You're going to marry Henry? All right, keep your hair on. I've sewn this to my leg as well. Is that a problem? So we were hunter-gatherers. We hunted and gathered. I would have elected to be, I would have chosen to be a hunter. It seems more fun. She's more dangerous and more, yeah, and more, you put face paint on your thing, it's makeup, it's almost me. Action transvestite, that's what hunter-gatherers were. <laughs> we'll see it with the Native Americans. We're there. 
the gathering, the gathering seems slightly more. One, twelve, thirteen. Twelve, thirteen, twelve. How many you got? I got, I got seven. I gave up. I gave up. I lost the will to live. We've already got nineteen berries. They're gonna kill us. Suddenly the hunters return. We are hunters. We have returned with stuff on our faces, having killed bison and buffalo and beavers and badgers and uh, balloons, which was weird. They went pop. We killed mainly bee animals today. Tomorrow we will kill cats and chinchillas and crocodiles, then dogs and dingoes, then elephants and eels, and then fungus. <laughs> That'll be a long day. How many berries do you have for us? A total of 19, sir. It's a bit crap. Seven hours for 19 berries, that's two point... That's something an hour, isn't it? <laughs> Never mind, put them all together and make a smoothie. Needs a bit of Turkish yogurt. Oh, they haven't invaded yet. They haven't invaded. Not gonna... So it was the hunter. And we all looked pretty good. That was the one upside of the Stone Age period. We looked fucking fantastic, man. Come on, let's go hunting. Just in underwear. Come on. Janine, Stavros, Kenny, Rogers, two people. Come on. We look brilliant. In fact, hold me over a pond, will you? I want to see what I look like. The only way you could look at yourself in the old days. Everyone looked a little bit hangy downy. I look a bit hanging around. So that was it. 10,000 years ago, the ice went away, going, bye, bye, good luck with civilization. Invent fridges. <laughs> and off they went. And that is when the hunter gather period moved in to the agrarian period, farming. Farming is a step up in civilization. More cultivated uh, groups of communities can grow, but it's a step down in sexiness. There are no farming films. No, farming. Bruce Willis in farming. Farming three. Dun, 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 dun. He was just a farmer. Someone stole his beans. You fucking stole my beans, Magruder. I'll chase you on my yak. Dun, 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 dun. You'll never catch me. I have a yak too. Dun, 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 dun. It's on top yak. Dun, dun, dun. One of the best yaks in the world. Dun, dun, dun. Not exciting films. Look, the grass is growing. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and that's why farmers keep animals, to make it more rock and roll, more exciting. Most of the animals they keep, by choice, are noisy animals. Cows go moo, and sheep go ba, and dogs go woof, and cats go woof, and pigs go woof, and horses go woo, and donkeys go ee oh, and pigs go onk. No, woof or crack. No, they don't go crack. They, maybe they take crack. We're not sure, I'm not sure of that. The jury's still out on that one. Uh, uh, ducks, geese, all noisy bastards. You know, they keep no snails. <laughs> no badgers, no stoats, no weasels, no uh, rabbits. All very quiet. Gazelles make no noise, except for this noise. Because <laughs> they leap. You, could, you, you couldn't farm gazelles, could you? You'd have to keep them in a the bag. <laughs> Want a gazelle, mate? Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> it's not a gazelle, that's an eel. Shit, got the wrong bag. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's gone. They have wings, you see, in the early days. You can tell, but I can't. Giraffes, giraffes have no safety noise. They don't have a safety noise. Like chickens have a safety noise, which is unless you wedge a trumpet on their face. And then it's and you could train a chicken to do jazz, which I would encourage all farmers to do. Then the farmer's wife will say, what the hell is that? That's my jazz chicken. <laughs> but how does he make an embouchure? He has a beak. I wedged a mango in there. <laughs> oh, you box clever there. <laughs> and he wouldn't actually wake you up, would you? It would be like a permanent snooze button. And now it's 6 a.m. and jazz chicken. <laughs> Noon, people are going, milk me, motherfucker. <laughs> milk me, get this milk out of me. Someone plug in, for God's sake. I'm gonna rub myself against a tree. Get rid of this. <laughs> we don't know how, how did feral cows milk themselves in the old days, before farming? There must have been feral cow, wild cows in the old days. Cows were crazy, wild. 
<laughs> Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> cows would drive through the streets in cars. Is this your car, sir? No. <laughs> Do you realize how fast you were going? No. <laughs> yeah. Is this your friend? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Uh, Sarge, I think there's a raptor and a cow and a car. <laughs> Get everything here. What do you mean everything? I mean everything! As Gary would say. <laughs> no. Do you realise how fast you were going? No. You were doing three miles an hour. It's going faster now. But uh, giraffes have no emergency sound. If a giraffe sees a tiger in Africa, it would have alarm and surprise as two of its main emotions. Two of the emotions of the Spanish Inquisition. Fear, well, fear and surprise. Fear because, oh, it's a tiger. And surprise because it's a tiger. And there aren't any in Africa. So what's it doing there? Is it on holiday? <laughs> um, and if they come over with pirates, it's for the Gulf of Aden, my hometown. So, yeah, and it would turn to its friends and say nothing. It has no... <laughs> nothing. It should hire a jazz chicken to sit on its back and go... <laughs> or the jazz chicken could go... do that. And then it'll go, there are bees coming. Not oh, bees. <laughs> it has no way of saying tiger. So, but they can cough. If you look in Wikipedia, they can cough. And so that's what they must use, the very British method of pointing out alarming things. <laughs> There's a tiger over there. <coughs> tiger. <coughs> tiger over there. It's <coughs> a fucking great big tiger. <coughs> tiger at four o'clock. And then they do go, you see them go. I get the fuck out of there. And where do they go to? Where... Where do they go to? The giraffes who run. Well, they're taller than Africa, that, that, that savannah bit. They're so tall, they must hide behind giraffes. That's what I've worked out. One giraffe is here and then the other giraffe just lying out. Just stay, stay in line, back a bit, back a bit, back a bit. Forward, forward a bit, back a bit, back, back a bit, back a bit. And the the giraffe pretends, at this point, he pretends to be the Eiffel Tower. C'est fantastique, c'est très belle. Oh, Paris, bonne nuit, c'est... Oh, si belle. Boom, fish and chicken. Sur la plage, quel dommage. Quel sausage. De ma père, oui, ma mère. Tiger's walking around going, where are we? We were in Asia, then Africa, now we're in France. I can't stand this. Give me the iPhone. Yeah. 
Noah, he knew about animals. Oh, yes, he did. And uh, he's mentioned in the Bible, which I think are oral histories. So I think it did happen. There was a flood. There's flood stories mentioned in the Bible, mentioned outside the Bible. We saw the tsunami. We know they happened. Now, the big point is, did God tell him to make a boat or did Noah just use his captain common sense? Because a number of us, if we were somewhere where it was raining and 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 raining, and we had a big pile of wood, some of us might put two or two together and go, I'm gonna make a bloody boat. Others might go, I'm gonna make a hairdresser. I'm gonna build a monkey emporium. I'm gonna build a big set of wooden shoes that would fit a giant. <laughs> but he made a boat. Oh, he was quite sensible. And what did he put on the boat? His family. What else? Animals. Which animals? Any he could find. Did he put two of every animal in the world on the boat? No. How can I be so sure? Try it. <laughs> Just try it. It's impossible. And there is such a word as impossible. You can't, it is impossible to eat the Himalayas. <laughs> you know, there's such a word as can't. Well, try eating the bloody Himalayas. Oh, I got full after about two mountains. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get through that. So he was there and he built this boat and, you know, just trying to get everything on there would be a nightmare. And it had to be everything, two, from two dung beetles up to two giant squid, all of them. All the fish had to be there because we know they were bad, some of them. Sharks are bad. You know, very few good sharks. Very few sharks say, we found a child. <laughs> he was swimming about, having a bad time. We were going to eat him, but we thought it is not our way anymore. <laughs> Since the Geneva Convention on sharks and the agreement that sharks made with humans, we took his leg, but that is our trade. <laughs> we call him Stumpy <laughs> or Thumper. I think his name is Kenneth. <laughs> so Noah would be there saying, all right, Margaret, Margaret, just stuff them all over the boat. Put what, lash one giant squid to the roof. Just do it. It's raining, Margaret. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just put them anywhere. F shove them in cupboards. Be giant squid sticking out of cupboards going, there's no towels. <laughs> Is she there? No towels. Giant squid diary day one. Got to the boat. Everything rather damp. Must inform TripAdvisor. <laughs> Seem to be running out of ink. Met a number of animals, interesting ones, cat, dog, squirrel, a mouse. I will eat them later. <laughs> Can't find Horace, think he's lashed to the roof. <laughs> and the whole two by two thing doesn't work. Two by two animals, all right, here we go. Kids, gonna get them up two by two. Two, uh, two tigers, two cats, two dogs, two fish, two rabbits, two squirrels, two llamas, two blue things, uh, two zebras. How many is that? Uh, that uh, so far, uh, two tigers, Dad. What do you mean? Oh, no. <laughs> what happened? They just seemed to... It became a Wendy's all-you-can-eat kind of... <laughs> do we have a psychotherapist on board? Because I think I need to readjust after that. It wouldn't work. Lions and tigers eat everything. It's like putting students on a boat with a load of cake mix, isn't it? <laughs> it would just be a munching fest. I've been up close to a lion and they, they, they just do that. And after 40 days and 40 nights of rain, which is 40 days of rain, isn't it? The nights are implicit, for God's sake. It's a month and a bit of rain. Don't drag it out. Just, oh, 40 lunch times and 40 afternoon teas. <laughs> just padding out the Bible. After that period of time, they'd be there from the Bible on the bit of land saying, we're here as the ark makes landfall. What a historic day. God's plan has worked. The ark has made it with two of everything. And here they come, there's uh, Noah and his family first trying to get a wedding. Oh, they're rushing away there, probably meeting some friends late for a dinner appointment. And uh, lions and tigers, there they go. Well, they're chasing, I've uh, made friends already, I suppose. And uh, no one else at the moment must be uh, packing. Um, <laughs> just getting their things together. What a wonderful, glorious day. Oh, here comes a, uh, it's a squirrel, He's just running out there. Mr. Squirrel, how did it go? You, it was a nightmare, man. Don't go there. It was crazy. They killed everything. Those stripy bastards, they killed everything, man. There's nothing there, man. It's all dead. All dead. It's like a ghost ship. I, I escaped. I hid in a colander. <laughs> oh, shit. You got to write that down in the Bible. It was a bad plan, man. Bad plan. No plan. What happened to your wife? She got away. Got away in a boat with an owl and a cat. <laughs> Did they take anything with them? 
Yeah, they took spoons and a helicopter, a little toy one, and uh, a Gatling gun. An owl and a pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some spoons, a helicopter, and a Gatling gun. Yeah. It's not poetry. So, um, civilization. That's what we're about. And uh, while we're here, you know, because I don't think there's actually a reason why we're here, but while we're here, we may as well try and be civilized. Just a little bit British. Just a little bit getting up in the morning and saying, hello, how are you? Walking on. Can't stand the man myself. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. And the Egyptians and the, uh, the Egyptians and the Sumerians, they started it off. They started the ball rolling about 5,000 years ago. They said, come on, irrigation, that's a good thing. And uh, the pharaohs were going, I'm 12 years old, I could die sometime. But you're very young, so yeah, I could die, so I want to die in a pointy thing. All right, we'll make one about head height. A mile high. <laughs> Bloody 12-year-olds. <laughs> Come on, lads, cut some rock. And it was all kind of sandy, and uh, they worshipped Ra, the sun god Ra. They had a song, Ra, hurrah for Ra. He's up there near the stars, but they're not there. They've gone somewhere else, and he is there. It's up there. It's quite hot. It's hot. It makes all our ground crappy, unless we have irrigation. La, 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 Ra, Ra. There was a, I'm not sure what the song was. <laughs> it was something in that area. And sun worshipping, the sun worshipping of the sun god, that is the circle behind Mary's head. Mary and baby G, you know they got the circle? And you grew up thinking that meant they were very, very good. Very, very, very good. And I wore the Colgate Ring of Confidence. Remember that one? <laughs> Actually, it uh, means it's sun worshipping. It was slid in behind Christianity. Christianity, hello. Because Christians worship Chris, of course. Um, <laughs> that's what it should be about. Christmas is when we remember Chris and how he so brilliantly landed on that pagan ritual of being both and born on the 25th of December. Once well, it, the Christianity, there was all these pagan religions and the Christianity went <laughs> That seems to fit. <laughs> well, it was. And all those people, a lot of churches are built on pagan sites. So people turn up for the pagan rituals. Let's go and uh, worship on the Feast of Bingo. Oh, where the fuck did this come from? Ooh, it's not bingo anymore. It's, it's uh, Mr. Mr. Chris. Oh, let's worship him then, shall we? Whoever's here will worship. So, yeah. Um, so the Egyptians, they got in there. The Egyptians did a number of groovy things and, uh, you know, 5,000 years they were there. They invented a language, a language, a language written up on there. And it was a nightmare for newsreaders. Here is the news in Egypt. Man with a hat, man with a hat, dog, dog with a gun, dog walking, pig, pig, pig coming, man, duck, duck with a gun. Thing, man, there's an eyeball walking along. Wow, what's going on there? Chicken, chicken with a banjo, dog, really a powerful dog, comes along and the cat got him in an arm lock. And three things, big eye, big eye, fish, cat. It seems the orgy in, in the zoo continues into its seventh year. That's what I'm guessing. Anyway, here's the weather with Janine. Uh, thank you. It'll be sunny forever. <laughs> and now, the Greeks. So the Greeks came in, because uh, the Egyptians all died in a car crash. And uh, the Greeks, they had democracy. It's two words, two Greek words. Demos means people. Ocracy is a kind of uh, inflatable cat. <laughs> Full of helium. Fort now, fort now. <laughs> kind of like Blade Runner, in my mind. <laughs> so they had democracy, which was great, and it, took, and, and it took off there, it flowered through the Roman period, 500 years of democracy. And then it went <laughs> somewhere around Caesar, the third son of God. Um, <laughs> and uh, they also not only had that, they had the Spartans. The Spartans were the, most, the elite fighters of today, are based on the Spartans. And uh, the Spartans were just crazy. Get up in the morning. Kids. Dad. Spears. Breakfast. How many did you get? Got eight. I got seven. 
just mayhem. Death by numbers. Yeah, the Spartans. The men, of course, were huh, but the women were also huh, and the children were huh, and the dogs were woof, and the cats were woof. The slugs were hey. And the sheep, shh, silent. The most deadly sheep in the world. They were the only predator sheep the world has ever known. They would wear bandanas like the kamikaze pilots with ancient sheep runes on them that they had not a clue what they meant. And they would sneak up on walls. They would creep up in the dead of night. They would never make a bleat. And wolves would wake and go, sheep! What? I'm the wolf who cries sheep. And the irony was writ large upon them. And the sheep would be in a standoff with the wolves because they knew they were more powerful, but the sheep were brave. And the sheep would take a rusty blade and they would say, look at this! And they would shear themselves. Come on! I've got my jacket off now. Do you want to come outside? And the wolves would go, we are outside. Let's fight, motherfucker. <laughs> and the wolves would go, this is not in the book. <laughs> Grab their clothes and run. <laughs> so as, as the audience realized where the joke was, the wolves in sheep's clothing would run down the hill, run into a local market, buy Slurpees, run off and never pay. Yeah, I thought they were sheep. They were wolves in sheep's clothing. I didn't know. New thing to me. And it started a whole spate of that. Wolves in sheep's clothing, dogs in cat's clothing, pigs in giraffe's clothing. Which looked odd. And ants in elephant's clothing. Which was the biggest bluff of all. Move, or we will trample you. You're the flattest, flattest elephants I've ever seen. We are covert elephants. Worked for the national secret people. We're taking leaves back to our nests. Elephants don't have nests. Shit. We will trample you. With our noses. <laughs> Said the man. Forget that scene. No, I like the scene after that. I don't know where it goes after that. And suddenly a cow turned up. No. <laughs> you again? No. Can you give me a lift to shops? No. Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, I'm coming with you. Stop writing on the windows. I thought you just said moo. No. <laughs> Moving that mime away. <laughs> so, Spartans. They fought the Battle of Thermopylae. Battle of Thermopylae, made into, made into a film called On the Good Ship Lollipop. <laughs> that was the first film about it. It's an anagram, On the Good Ship Lollipop, Battle of Thermopylae. It's exactly the same letters. It's almost exactly the same letters. <laughs> it was a Shirley Temple film. She was in her Jodie Foster taxi driver period. She was trying to do more edgy children's films. But anyway, she, she wanted to, I want to make a film. I want to make the Spartans, the Spartans, the Mopli. Said, all right. And it was on the good ship Lollipop. And they did that. On the good ship. Shirley, Spartan. Lollipop. But they, they tested it on children in America. And the children actually exploded. And... Uh, <laughs> Shit, they're going. So they decided to edit all the violence out of the film. And you can't tell, if you watch it a little on the Good Ship Lollipop, you can't tell, except if you look at Shirley, when she turns in a certain light, you can just see a little bit of blood coming out of here, down her chin. 
But the Spartans were crazy. They would oil themselves before battle so no one could take them alive. I got him. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> These guys, it's like fighting fish over here, Xerxes. Xerxes, put the Scrabble board down, mate. <laughs> Who invented travel, Scrabble? <laughs> Come on, we're trying to do something here. These blokes, and they're tactically very clever because, I mean, the Spartans, it's 300 Spartans against 50,000, 100,000 Persians. No one knows how many Persians. They now think it could have been all the Persians. <laughs> Persia was empty that day, they believe. <laughs> if you'd walked into Persia, just empty, except for cats and carpets. <laughs> People were just helping themselves. We're here on the border of Persia and there's just people with cup and cats trying to protect them. Give us a carpet, get a layer of carpet. Vote now. The Spartans were clever as well, tactically clever. They got the Persians to attack them in a very narrow place, which was the corridor of a student union party. <laughs> get a cake mix out the window. <laughs> Take the booze, run. Take the Watney's Red Barrel. Was, I didn't have that, no, it was more tenants. <laughs> Cans of lager. Anyway, so, yes, so that was the Spartans. Greeks fought with the phalanx, they would have uh, a whole group of people with 20 foot spears. You couldn't get at them, they had 20 foot spears. Unless one of your group was crazy enough to say, don't worry, I'll lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifice himself on the spear. <laughs> 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 Can't do that. Funk, funk, funk. Ha 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 Extra two foot of my spear. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, he's heavy. I'm gonna wiggle him off the end. <laughs> boom, boom. Oh, crap. <laughs> I think you're signaling. I'm not, I'm just trying to get <laughs> dead guy off the end of my spear. I probably think he's a pole vaulter having a really weird. <laughs> Having a real tough day at the office. <laughs> These gigs are just for me, really. <laughs> Come off my spear. Hang on. I can't see anything, I can't see anything. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> then the Romans came in with a short pointy sword, turned it sideways and... <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Welcome. To the second line of defense. <laughs> I've just got to get a sherbet or something. <laughs> the Romans took over everything. They built aqueducts, viaducts. They could move ducks around faster than anyone ever had. <laughs> Everyone was confused by this brilliant move that meant that ducks were always in difficult places to get at. And you, couldn't, now, you never knew where, where were these ducks coming from. And even the ducks were like, we don't know where we're here. The world was going, I think it's supposed to be our water, really. And the men seemed to rule the empires. In fact, the women ruled the empires with the use of poison. And the men would say, I, Lucius, I will kill Gaius Cassius and I will be emperor of the Rome. And the women would say, good luck, Lucius. Have a peach before you go. Thank you, Calpani. <laughs> People of Rome. <laughs> now my young three-year-old idiot duck son will become... <laughs> Wee, 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 wee. 
Now the Romans did a hell of a lot, man. They did a hell of a lot. Very industrious, very good at killing, death by death. <laughs> death by killing with big pointy things. They were good at that. But they did this with a language, which we know from school is silly. <laughs> it's too bloody complicated. It's just got nouns that are masculine, feminine, neuter, bisexual, hermaphrodite, and straight transvestite. They have an accusative, a nominative, a vocative, a locative, a, an ablative, a dative, and a genitive. Couldn't they have had 19 more? I mean, why stop at 27? I mean, it just, it goes on. If somebody says, do you want a beer? You are stuck in the idea of, I'm the object. I'm the beer's the object. No, I want a beer. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes is affirmative. I want affirmative action, but the beer is the, you are the object. No, the beer is the object. The beer is coming towards me. That's motion towards, that's two. So dative's got to be in there somewhere. <laughs> just mime me an answer. Some, yeah, all right, man. How did they get the messages out? When Hannibal attacked through Spain, up and over the Alps, how did they get the message out? I mean, because Hannibal actually won a whole bunch of battles, and maybe that was because they just couldn't speak to each other quick enough. Messengers running from one battle to another going, Centurion, Centurion, Alarum, Alarum, miser Miserarum, Miserarium, Miserarium, <laughs> Alarum, Miserarium, uh, Tootin, the sold autumns, uh, uh, Murati on the, on, on the party. Quad the fuck is the quadrat quadrat demonstrandum? Uh, 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 ich bin messengerio. C naturalimo. Und uh, ich ich kuriri nachiri from a long way away. Mit nusum tremoves de the the uh, battalarium, the battalium, the pugnacho of the peoples and tutti of the mooties. On the booties. <laughs> what the fuck they're talking about here? Uh, it's difficult, Harium. Uh, 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 Hannibal, Hannibal, Hannibal. See Hannibal. Oh, did this knock um, meant an art them, uh, Hannibal? See Hannibal, Hannibal, generalissimo, Hannibal, Hannibal. Just straight dangaroos. See, uh, uh, Comte, mein Herr. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's a river arm, a river, a river, a river dechi? No, uh, a river armus. Riva, va, 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 is Veni Vidovici, Veni Vidovici. <laughs> si, Veni Vidovici, uh, Hannibal. Mit soldatus? Si, mit soldatus. No, tut sel, uh, it was bucket in spade, on holiday, I think. Uh, <laughs> Naturalum on mit soldatus, mit total soldatus, molto soldatus, infinitatus soldatus. <laughs> infinitatus soldatus is mathematicus totally possible <laughs> No. Ask Pythagoras. <laughs> yes, is to uh, to treat him. Is the uh, is the, the veritum? Yeah, yeah. Pi. Daksha. <laughs> so, oh God. Have you tried just not cooking it? It's a pam out. It's a pam out, mate. Rhetorical, um, gas markum qua? <laughs> gas markum 3.141. <laughs> ah. It's a joke. It's a joke. the funny lad. <laughs> High fives, back largest. Square the pipe bottom. Have you finished? <laughs> no. Because, set for, uh, uh, Hannibal uh, is coming round the mountain when he comes. <laughs> uh, it's coming round the mountains when he comes. Coming round the mountains. Coming round the mountains. Coming round the mountains when he comes. <laughs> Singing. Bang, ding, tick a tick a bong, tick a bong, tick tock a ding, zick a ding dang, doggo, ding ding ding, zick a ding 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 dong. Mid pink pajamas. Kind pink pajamas. Set for er kommt mit Elefantine. Elefantine. What the fuck Elefantine around? <laughs> elephantine trade dangaroos. Elephantine trade mysteriosum. Front part is Elephantine. It's similaris con and squirrel. <laughs> hey man, don't take the piss out of me. I just hear it, you know. Looking for my wife. You seen a boat? 
Imagine artist, maximum squirrel. Upside down is back to front is. Tail him, it knows him. Tail him, it knows him. Back part is elephantine. It's similaris called a magnus pigus. Biggest pigus. Push, 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 bike pump. Attach your McDuck take. That is elephantine. That is elephantine? Run, motherfucker. It's too big, too long. All that takes far too long, and Hannibal would overrun them and kill them all and set up a charity. English is, is, is good, it's taken off because it's such a simple language at its base level. Hannibal's coming. Hannibal, what with? Soldiers, how many? Tons, what else? Elephants, what are they? Pigs and squirrels, run. <laughs> and they come up. The English have gone, the English have gone. Oh God, they have such a quick language. You have to have a tea party to work out the Latin stuff. <laughs> yes, we got rid of one of our U's. We had two U's. We got rid of one. The whole familiar U, aren't you my father? And the unfamiliar U. Oh, who the fuck are you guys? <laughs> so we got rid of the first one. That was all the the and the thou one that the pilgrims used. Wouldst thee, wouldst, wouldst thou, would thee, thy, the thum thou. Wouldst thou, thou wilt disagree. Thou wilt have a bad time over the fact that thou defendeth the way with... <laughs> Why don't you all just go? <laughs> go and hang in the middle of the country. So, yeah, the Romans all died in, uh, in a chariot crash. And <laughs> then Charles Darwin wrote a famous book in 18 Scritty Swampsons. <laughs> and that book was an interesting book because it was called Monkey, 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 You! And, and, you know, it just uh, took off uh, like wildfire and uh, it caused an outrage in the monkey kingdom. <laughs> Monkeys were furious about it. Oh, God, they were flinging poo at electrical fans that had <laughs> been specially set up for the occasion. Because the shit hits the fan is a saying that is post-electricity. <laughs> Pre-electricity is just... <laughs> Did you just throw poo at my fan? What's the point of that? You want me to switch the electricity on? Well, we've only just had it wired up. I don't see what a... Oh, I see. Yes, yes. Yes, the shit has certainly hit the fan there. Before electricity, they used to have to... Uh, all they had was... Then the shit would really hit the Archimedes screw. It was much slower. So, yeah, so that was it, evolution, evolution. And we have evolution all the way from the beginning up to now, including all of us, the, the genetics that go through us, the inbreeding, non-inbreeding, the royal family. <laughs> well, it's good that the royal family, they should have sex with people. The idea of being commoners, we have an idea of commoners. Commoners is a horrible word. I think it should be real people. <laughs> That's what the House of Commons should be, the House of Real People. And the commoners, yeah, the real people, you see? So the Queen Mother, she was always crazy. She was shot out of a cannon for a funeral, as you know. <laughs> that was her dying wish. Shoot me out of a cannon. And it's kind of a Robin Hood thing going on there. Because she was a Scottish lady. Oh, yes. She was, you never heard her speak. Do you remember, the last 40 years, never heard a word. But she was there going, will you shoot me out of a cannon? Come on. <laughs> I'd like to see the soul one more time before I land in the Isle of Wight. Come on, you fuck. Give us a break. Something like that. But the Queen, I just have a problem with monarchy, because obviously in the third millennium, hereditary privilege is insane. Yes, I hear your silent chest. <laughs> hereditary privilege? How do you explain it to children? Why do some people live in fantastic houses and we give them cash out of our taxes? Because, uh, I don't know, that's a good question, small child. Yes. I know, well, it, it is an interesting question. Well, you know, it's got to change. I think Charlie's doing something. You know, he's doing organic farming, he's doing stuff, you know, uh, the, the charity he does is good. Some of the kids are doing stuff, but Liz and Phil, Liz and Phil haven't done anything. Liz and Phil just sat there. Because they got in at 52, and then immediately the Queen introduced a new... Then in the 60s, the Queen decided to change the way that... 
and she encouraged people to. In the 70s, she completely redistributed. And realized she had too much wealth, so she decided to. Then in the 80s, they set up a charity to do. And then they encouraged other people to. Then in the 90s, they just totally relaxed. And they said, everyone, why don't you? And then in the 2000s, they've set a great example by Stop me at any point. I think she's got 20 years left. She's in there, but she essentially does what she does on the stamps. <laughs> do something. Just do something. Open your house up. Give away your house away. Change something. Do something. Change your hair. Smoke a cigarette. Drive a car. <laughs> wave a bit. Fucking wave. Where's the fucking waving? We pay good money. We want some fucking waving. <laughs> Got cash, got cash, do waves. Don't you think? Anyway, so evolution. We can see evolution with fish. Fish swim in the sea, they're very thin, they breathe through their necks. And, and, and they just seem to be, they have very short memories, I believe, fish. And so they seem to just be going, oh, 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 oh. As if someone's just told them, you realize you're fish and you have very short memories. Oh. 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 Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, no. And then walk the mudskipper is a fish that, that walks along on its legs. You can see the evolution with the mudskipper going along. And if you look right deep into his eyes, you can see him going, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. One day I have a house and a Ferrari. And I'll, I'll work on the stock exchange and lose loads of money down a toilet. And then fish fly, fish fly in the sky. They must be up there going, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> and then they must stop in trees occasionally and go, oh. And then birds are in trees and they go, who the fuck are you guys? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh. We're birds, we eat fish. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh. Fly, Freddy, fly. <laughs> you ever seen birds chasing fish in the air? Just look so, you go, oh, I gotta have a drink. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, so that's the fish side, that's evolution. Then in, on the creation side, God got the world and he went, <laughs> there it is, it's blue, don't fuck it up. <laughs> Can't stand the man. <laughs> we don't know what that means. It's just funny, but we don't know why. But no, he didn't do it in one go, which I think, why, don't, why, why take six days over it? Why not just go, <laughs> he did six days with one day for prayer. Why not do two seconds, ba boom ba, for Zoom, and then you've got seven days for prayer. And then you can just be up there going, oh God, you're really great, you're really fantastic. <laughs> Dear God, we thank you, especially for the, what you did on Tuesday. It was really, was it Tuesday? No, never, that's right. <laughs> you never wake up, you hear, God's given everyone an extra banana. What a wonderful day it is. <laughs> extra banana for everyone. Never. Anyway, six days of making the earth, like, like he's making a train set for his kids. <laughs> After a while, small animals will be following, going, who are you? <laughs> I'm God. Why are you taking so long? <laughs> We've got no food. All right, I'll make you food. Sorry about that. Uh, what are you, badgers? Squirrels? Chicken? <laughs> we eat nuts, man. Have you seen a boat? <laughs> Haven't made them yet. Oh, what am I doing here? <laughs> right, badgers. Badgers eat bok choy. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Not eating that. It's supposed to be pak choy anyway. It's called bok choy. Pak choy. Mandarin. Cantonese. <laughs> Not eating it. All right. Sprouting broccoli. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Holy crap. I see badgers can be choosers. Um, <laughs> what? What, you've heard too many bok choy, pak choy, sprouting broccoli, badger creationist jokes this week? <laughs> oh yeah, up to here, every other person is saying them. 
can't. You're just wading through them this Christmas. <laughs> that old chestnut. Didn't the Greeks use that one? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> All right, Mr. Badger. <laughs> Creme brulee, you should eat. Creme brulee? That's hardly brulee, that's singed, that it? <laughs> All right, that's creme flambe now. Creme brulee, creme flambe. When did you learn French? While well, you were pissed about making the year. <laughs> I was on Rosetta Stone. We were all sitting around there going, La chaise est sur l'éléphant. <laughs> I know what he's talking about. <laughs> Day one in the giant squid diaries. <laughs> Nothing's worse. Day three, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> Shit, running out of ink. Ah. Why, why, why? There's no water yet. Bugger, bugger. All right. Get, give me another Let's Diary, will you? Remember those? <laughs> Every Christmas you get your Let's Diary. And you'd fill in just the first six days and then blank. <laughs> Did everyone do that? And about June you'd rediscover it and start filling in then and go, and you'd backfill it with lessons. Okay, I saw one kid doing that. Anyway, creationism has turned through the mind of a Sarah Palin into intelligent design. And I have two problems with intelligent design. One is the intelligence part of it, and the other is the design part of it. <laughs> because, you know, there's some things which are wonderful in the world, some things that are horrible, disgusting, cancer, intelligent design, or just weird fucking stuff going on, cholera, mm, all those things. If, if we were God for half an hour, we would ban uh, poo and pee. Why do we have poo and pee? You say, oh, we waste products. Why not just eat food and do stuff? <laughs> there's no logic to waste products. Just efficient use of energy. Eat it and boom, and go do stuff. Poo and pee causes all those causes diseases, spread the diseases, all the poo and peeing diseases, cholera, all that, out the window, if we were God. And then you say, you might need the poo for crops. Well, no, the crops grow because of sunlight. Or because they want to. <laughs> Remember your God. Yes. So the appendix, it sits next to your esophagus, your entire life going, any grass? Is that grass, mate? Is that grass? What's that? Bok choy? Yeah. Asshole. What's that? Spinach? Well, do you want... Oh, forget it. No, it's horrible. I don't want to touch it. We've got an appendix here, but forget it. Asparagus. That's like grass, isn't it? That big grass? Big grass, mate? Do you want to run it through me and Jimbo? Machine? One careful owner? This is insane. I'm calling intelligent design. Shh. 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 Intelligent design? Yes, yeah, the appendix. Yes, the appendix. Any news? <laughs> well, what the fuck are we doing? Did you put us here on duty to deal with grass? I mean, it doesn't eat grass. <laughs> Haven't you noticed? It might be evolution. <laughs> yeah, well, it might be, motherfucker. <laughs> we don't want to be here. We're just sitting here doing nothing. We want to be somewhere else. Where? Uh, we want to be in the back of books. You put an appendix in the back of books. Go on, put it there. And then we don't want page numbers, we want uh, Roman numerals. <laughs> Real teeny tiny ones. And then we want endless lists of rubbish that no one ever reads. Or they read two or three of them and they go, oh, this is crap. And then they go back. You do that. Otherwise, otherwise, we will explode. Your appendix explodes, just like John Hurt in the film Alien, where poof, that thing comes out, and that looks like an appendix with teeth. But your appendix very rarely gets huge and eats the rest of your crew. That's true. But that's it. Cows have four stomachs. Why do they have four stomachs? Why not one stomach? Why don't they do it like us, just eat stuff and then poo or pee? They have four crappy stomachs, or, or useless stomachs. They eat food, it comes back up, they chew it again, goes down, it comes back up, they keep going up and down. By the four stomach, surely it's coming up and they're going... <laughs> this did not need to come back up. <laughs> this should have gone the other way. <laughs> I now understand shit-eating grin. I never... <laughs> should be shit-eating grimace.
Cows should be in corners of, corners of fields going... <laughs> Never see that. Or they should be in cars going... <laughs> we like him. <laughs> no. Cow and raptor. Dang, 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 dang. Cow, raptor, dang, dang, dang. No. Go, cow, go. No. Put all the mo in the bag. Got lots of mo. The fuck is mo? I think it's air. Work on the first draft of this script. <laughs> so, I think we look for, for rules to live our lives. And I decided to take all the religions in the world and all the philosophies, because I think religions are philosophies with an extra top coat of mystical things, you know, and stuff of people living in the trees. Or, you know, clouds. Or trees. If a god lived in a tree, that wouldn't work, would it? I am a god. You're living in a tree. You're like a bird, aren't you? Yeah. But, ah, oh, bugger. What I chose from all the religions of the th in the world, I decided to, to try and live, you know, you, you want some rule to direction to live your life by. And do unto others as you'd have others do unto you. Seems to be one thing you can just grab hold of and it's really good. And it's not perfect and you're going to be grumpy at people or shouty or whatever. But if you try that one, I think it's really good. And you don't need anything else. And then there's the Ten Commandments. Now, that's a lot of commandments. And I think humans, we like simplicity. But anyway, Moses, charismatic individual, mentioned in the Bible, mentioned outside the Bible, grew up as an ancient Egyptian, which means he was an Egyptian who was really old at the age of three. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh, come over here, young man. Excited, are we? He would say. And uh, so he was actually a Hebrew person who was smuggled in and adopted and uh, all the Hebrew people were enslaved in Egypt at that time because they were there on holiday and it all went pear shaped <laughs> And Moses grew up, he killed a slave owner and then he rushed off and hid and became a uh, shepherd to get out of the, you know, being sent, put on trial or whatever it was. And while he was up in the mountain with his sheep, a bush caught fire. <laughs> and he said, right, come on sheep, get out of here. That's looking kind of biblical around here. <laughs> and the bush said, Moses, Moses, come back here. I said, hang on, hang on, just, just wait there. What is it? Moses, you must leave this place. I was leaving when you called me back. <laughs> the bloody hell, no, 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 no. You must leave this place in the short to midterm future on a, on a geopolitical basis. <laughs> You're a very complicated bush. We're not used to that round here. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so he ran over to the sheep. <laughs> it's a slow burn, he said to the sheep. He said, look, sheep, I gotta go, I gotta go, get out of Dodge City. You lads, you get out of here, run, you run from here. I have to go and do things. So you run and you find the Spartan sheep. They will train you to be ninjas. They will train you to be kamikaze. Uh, that's not very really useful. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's a kind of <laughs> thing. All right, forget it, it's too complicated. What? No. <laughs> You're moving sheep. You must find, find the Spartan sheep. They will train you to become leaders of sheep. And I'll meet you in the final scene. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he runs off. He goes down to his friends and says, Come on, lads, we've got all the Hebrew people and leave this desert. Let's go to a desert. <laughs> yeah, change is as good as a rest. <laughs> Wanna go to Surrey? No, it's a bit rainy there. <laughs> let's go to the desert. She says, Let's go tonight under the cover of frogs. So, because uh, there were 10 plagues that landed on Egypt. And, uh, you know, there's a plague of flies, <laughs> plague of locusts, and a plague of frogs was one of the weirdest plagues I've ever heard of. If that came from God, he had lost his marbles. Because a plague of frogs is not a plague, is it? It's just a lot of frogs. It's more frogs than usual. To be a plague, you have to be able to go, the flies, the flies, the locusts, the locusts. And you're never going, the frogs, the frogs. I'm drowning the frogs. Help me, mama, help me. Pull Jimby out of, the, out of the frog pit, the pit of frogs. The frogs have got him. Don't lick their backs. <laughs> Who came up with the hallucinogenic back of a toe? Was that God on crack cocaine? <laughs> look, Beezus, look at this. <laughs> Beezus, lick the back of that. Lick that. Lick the back of that toe. Lick the back of that toe. Dad, you said that for half an hour now.
Beezus, you're covered in something. What? <laughs> wow, this is really good toad. This is, this is a good year. What year is this? 1927. Wow, excellent toad year. <laughs> Toads came up with the line, you lick my back and I'll lick yours. <laughs> if he created a frog plague, then he must have been going, right, Teasus, Beezus, Deezus, Elsus, I want another plague. You've had ten, Dad. Well, you've had nine. This will be the tenth. You had a plague of toads, a plague of helicopters, a plague of people with weird haircuts, a plague of dripping. The dripping, the dripping. Oh, there's no bread. I want another plague. Who are those green lads over there? They're frogs, they're playing Canasta, World Championship. Who's winning? Frogs are, two to one. Who are they playing? Other frogs. Put them in a DC-9, I want them down. Great Pharaoh, huge green monsters are falling from the sky. Oh, small green monsters, quite small. Just frogs. Herbert. So they strapped them to their heads and they ran. Ah, there's frogs are escaping, it's okay. And they got through, they went through the Red Sea because a giant squid held the water back. Go on, good luck, good luck. Giant squid's diary, day 3009. Help the frogs. <laughs> Help the Hebrew people get out of Egypt. <laughs> Running out of bloody ink again. <laughs> Got a biro. <laughs> help the Hebrew people to escape under the cover of frogs. Was glad to help. Links with Noah. Saw Mr. Squirrel again. He was hell in there, man. We were enslaved. Squirrels were enslaved. For what? I don't know. I'm going to marry a chicken. So then they wandered in the desert for 40 years. And if I was with that group, after 23 years, I would have turned to them and said, What the fuck is going on? 23 years just wandering in the desert. I'll give you 17 more years and that's it. And after 17 years, 30 years, 40 years, after, and after 40 years, Obviously, people were going mad, going crazy. They're going, I'm going to have sex with my foot. I'm going to eat balloons till I explode. I'm going to set fire to my buttocks. I'm going to staple my toes to a tractor. I'm going to fill myself with sand and sell myself to a taxidermist. And Moses said, look, you can't do this. This is insane. There are no, the, 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 you can't. There are rules. There are no rules. All right, I'll get ten. So he runs off and comes back quickly. He says, all right, here they are. Rule one, never piss in a toaster. <laughs> never eat barbed wire. Don't call yourself Mr. Jim Jams. <laughs> never scrape your brain with the back of a comb. <laughs> Don't put your toes in the fire. Never sellotape your eyelids to your mother's. <laughs> what? These aren't rules. You just made these up on the way back from the hill. I couldn't find anyone with just, I'll, I'll get better ones, runs off. Two hours later, comes back, all right, all right, right, here we are. Always keep quiet, run up a tree if you see anyone. Keep your tail clean, keep your nuts and your makeup in a hole in the tree. <laughs> this is, these are squirrel rules. <laughs> hey man, don't have a go at us, man. We got good rules, yeah. We know what we're doing, man. This is my chicken. <laughs> Who are these people? They're not Hebrew squirrels and chickens. They're just with us. They're with the band. So, yes. So then he said... <laughs> They said to him, they said, Moses, look, Moses, we want real rules. Rules you can write on rock, the three R's. So he said, all right, I'll go get them. As the audience worked that joke out, he ran away. And he ran off and he was away for, 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 for months, about two months, long time, must have been, because by the time he returned, they had smelted metal. That's a Discovery Program channel thing. That's a smelting metal. Oh, he's not coming back. He's probably eaten by bears. Let's smelt metal. <laughs> Let's make a cast iron version of a god. And, and that never works. If you watch it, it's very difficult to make a proper mold and get it all working out, especially in the desert after 40 years. 
pour it out and go, there, golden calf. Looks like a badger that's head's exploded. <laughs> that's a stoat covered in sick. That's a man who's eaten too many balloons. Whatever it is, he's called Jimbo and we're worshipping him. We worship the Ojimbo, our Lord of us all. Please bring us kazoos on the hour, every hour. And then Moses returned, he said, like, he was furious and he smashed the tablets of stone on the ground. He said, what are you doing? And they all went. <laughs> said, is those, you call those kazoos? Because no one recognized the sound. They never do, great Moses. For some reason, that joke always screws up at that point. You can't do, we can't do kazoo sounds. <laughs> Don't practice now, they're filming. <laughs> the force is with them. With them? Yeah. Look, 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 I've got rules. And he says, it got rules, rock, rock rules, rules written on rock. And he had the Ten Commandments, but you don't need them because the one, do unto others, is a self-policing rule. Thou shalt not kill. Do unto others as you'd have others do unto you. Would you like others to kill you? Probably not. <laughs> so don't kill other people. Would you like your stuff being stolen? Probably not. So don't steal other people's. It's self-policing. So those are the two main ones. Then there's other ones in the Ten Commandments, like, you know, don't put your knitting on, a, uh, on the stage, Mrs. Worthington, or something, I don't know, it's just... <laughs> Never sellotape your hair to attract it. These things. And there's one in there that's just completely bonkers. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's ox. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is, was that all the rage? <laughs> was it, what, were people going, oh my God, have you seen Steve's ox? Oh, it's a, <laughs> what, what, where, where, where? Don't look now. It's a genius ox. It's the most amazing ox I've ever seen. Oh, it's brilliant. It's just, have you seen, it was on Top Ox. It was on Top Ox. You know Top Gear, it's a Top Ox. This ox can go naught to 50 in under a year. It is the most amazingly sleek, built by the Germans. You can hang your washing between his ears. He really has the biggest face this side of Christendom. This is one motherfucker of an ox. How were, why were people coveting oxes? Isn't thou shalt not steal the ox, or eat the ox, or set fire to the ox, or have sex with the ox? It's just covet the ox. You're just wanting the ox. How do you have an ox market? How do you sell oxes if no one wants them? Any trade will not work if no one can covet anything. It must have been weird. You know, people saying, you sh thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's ox. He's not my neighbor. He lives across the road, number 23. I'm off on a technicality. I used to say, it's thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's ox. And that makes more sense, because you can't find your bloody ox. Where's my ox? I can't bloody find the ox now. I was in it. Jim, have you seen my ox? I can't bloody see him anywhere. Someone's just run off with my ox. Where's your duvet? <laughs> You've lost a duvet, I've lost an ox. There's an ox and duvet stealer going around. I'm going to tell the local... Hang on, look, here's your duvet. It's moving. <laughs> Jimbo. You covered up my ox. You covered my ox, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's ox, and I'm your bloody neighbor. You're gonna go to hell for this. <laughs> now finally tonight, in 1969, the Americans landed on the moon, and I can prove it, because the Russians were also trying to get to the moon. It was the first, Russians had the first satellite in space, the first man in space, first woman in space, first orbit in space, first spacewalk. A load of firsts in there, very good, well done to them. And they didn't get to the moon first, and I don't know if that was money, I'm not sure what that, why the reason was there, but they were very close, they were sending an unmanned probe there, so they would have taken photographs, and, and if the Americans had not gone, they would have said, you did not go, we have photographs, we have videotape, it's a book, it's a thing, it's a car, it's two syllables, and come, scientists of the world, we will show you proof, and they would have proved, you know, six times, they could have proved it, you know, it's the Russians, they weren't getting on with the Americans at the time. So, a bit like now. So, yes. So they did go to the moon, and I had a lot invested in that as a child in Bishop Stalford watching. I didn't live there, but I, I just sort of said, I'll go to Bishop Stalford. Because <laughs> it's such a crazy name. Because <laughs> obviously, a bishop did have a Stalford there. <laughs> whatever it was. So, yeah, and when they landed on the moon, that was the time. If there is a God in the universe, he should have come down and said, You're the first ones to make it from the blue one to the gray one. Well done. <laughs> 
You win Smarties forever and congratulations. Neil, 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 well done. And Buzz, Buzz Lightyear? You Buzz Lightyear? You Buzz Lightyear? You Buzz Lightyear? You buzz Lightyear? Ah, your box clever there. Well done. Take off your helmets, relax. Welcome, welcome. No, don't take your helmets off. It's a joke. Sorry, I'm a bit dry. My humor's a bit dry. Hang out with the British for a while. Now, so, yeah, so this is the grey one. Uh, and it's just a top coat. We're going to paint it at some point. I'm thinking pink. What do you think, pink? I'm trying to do a snooker thing. <laughs> Blue one, red one, pink one. Yes, yes. I'm God, and I live on the dark side of the moon, along with uh, Darth Vader. Hello. <laughs> and uh, Pink Floyd. Hello. Who do an excellent group impression of Darth Vader. <laughs> and here we have a young friend, a raptor. Hi. <laughs> and the cow. Moo. Oh. <laughs> they just drove here. Being chased by these sheep. <laughs> He's a mad sheep who've been trained by Spartan sheep. We have a squirrel here. Hey, man, don't come here. This crazy fuck is here. That raptor's insane, man. It's gonna kill everyone. And this chicken. <laughs> And Mr. Gerald, the giant squid. Giant squid's diary, day 3009. <laughs> We're here on the moon with the human beings. They've made it to the moon. They've probably got a hundred more years before they blow themselves up. Can they do it? Can they be civilized enough? It's up to them. They have to think out of the box. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs>